we're going to talk about problems involving consecutive integers. Consecutive means things that are in a row. So if we have a knowledge quest for, say, five consecutive days, that means we've had a knowledge quest every day for five days in a row. Consecutive integers are the same thing. That means integers that are in a row. They're next to each other. When we have the integers, let's say we have one, to get to the next one, we simply add one to it, and we get two. We add another one to it, we get three. Another one to it, we get four, and so on and so forth. But if we don't know what the integers are, if we're trying to find them, we'll call the first one x. To get to the next integer, I add one, x plus one. To get to the next one, I add another one, x plus two. To get to the next one, I add yet another one, x plus three, and you get the idea. Now, let's take a look at a word problem that has the idea of consecutive integers going on with it. In this first problem, it says the sum of two consecutive integers is negative 29. Find the integers. Well, first thing we'll do is set up our let statement. We want two consecutive integers. So we'll have our first consecutive integer, we'll call that x. Our second consecutive integer, we'll call that x plus 1. Now let's write our equation. The sum of the two integers is negative 29. So the first plus the second equals negative 29. Let's go ahead and plug in the numbers. x plus x plus 1 equals negative 29. Now I'm just solving the equation and I get x equals negative 15. Negative 15 is the first of my integers. Let's see what the next one is. It's x plus 1. Negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14. And so my two consecutive integers are negative 15 and negative 14. That's really all there is to it. You just need to write out your let statements, which really is your guide in setting up the problem. Fill out the equation using what's given to you in the problem, and then write out the equation, solve, and get your, your two numbers. Example number two is just like this. I'd like for you to pause the video here, use the first example as a guide, and see how you do. Okay, let's take a look. On example two, the sum of two consecutive integers is 41. Our first integer is x. Our second integer is x plus 1. The sum, the first plus the second, equals 41. So I have x plus x plus 1 equals 41. I combine like terms and solve the equations, and I get that x equals 20. The first one is 20. The second one is x plus 1, so it must be 21. And so my integers are 20 and 21. Now how about an example that has a little bit more going on, maybe one that's a little bit more challenging. Let's take a look at that on example 3. On example 3, we have three consecutive integers. Same idea. We have our first one, x, our second one, x plus 1, and our third one, x plus 2. And the sum is negative 21. So the first one plus the second one plus the third one equals negative 21. That gives me 3x plus 3 equals negative 21. Now I solve the equation and get x equals negative 8. This one is negative 8. x plus 1, negative 7 x plus 2, negative 6. It's a good idea to write out your numbers here because very often what folks will do is say, okay, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10. But be careful, negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7, negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. So it's a good idea to write things down and proceed cautiously. Now, these are some simple problems with one or two consecutive integers. They can be a little more interesting. Let's take a look at the next example. It has a little bit more going on. <clears throat> example four is on this side of the screen here. It says three consecutive integers such that the sum of the first two 
is 24 more than the third. Okay, we want three consecutive integers. So I'll have my first, second, and third, x, x plus 1, x plus 2. So far, nothing different. Just a lot of words. Three consecutive integers, here they are. Now let's write our equation. The sum of the first two, so the sum of the first one and the second one, is equals 24 more than the third. So the sum of the first two, x and x plus 1, is equals 24 more than the third. The third plus 24. So that gives me 2x plus 1 equals x plus 26. Solve the equation, I get x equals 25. Really the hardest part here was writing this equation from the stuff given to me up here in the sentence. Now if this is 25, this one must be 26, this one here must be 27. I'd like for you to try the next one on your own. I know the work's right here, but I'm going to ask you to pause the video and see if you can do it on your own, then we'll come back and talk about it. Let's take a look. The sum of the first two is six less than three times the third. Again, they told us we have three consecutive integers, x, x plus one, x plus two, and then they told us that the sum of the first two, x and x plus one, is equals six less than three times the third. So I have three times the third one minus six. Now I go through and clean this up. Remember I have to use the distributive property over there and I end up with x equals one. The first one is one, second one is two, the third one is three. So my integers are one, two, and three. Next, let's take a look at consecutive even and consecutive odd integers. When we talk about consecutive even or consecutive odd integers, we're talking about even integers in a row, such as 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, or odd integers that are all in a row, such as 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, etc. So even integers that are in a row or odd integers that are in a row. Let's start by talking about the evens. Let's start with zero. Zero is an even integer. And to get to the next one, it's not one place away, it's two places away. So to get from zero to here, I go two places down. And to get from two to the next one, which is four, I go two more spots down the number line. That gives me the fourth. Then to get to the next one, two more spots down the number line, that gives me six. So each of the integers, the even integers, are two spaces away. I went from here, added two, went from here, added two, went from here, added two. When I'm talking about integers that I don't know, and I've started with x, well the next one is two spots away. So I go x plus two. The next one is another two spots away. So I go two more spots, that gives me x plus 4. Another two spots, x plus 6. And so when I want the even integers, the consecutive even integers, I have x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6. <clears throat> now, let's hold that thought for a moment and let's look at the odd integers because there's a nice pattern that I think you're really going to like. Let's suppose we start at the number 1. The next odd integer is 3. And to get to 3, we go two more spots down the number line. We added 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. To get to the next now odd one, we go two more spots down the number line. We get to 5. Two more spots, we get to 7. So if we don't know what our integers are, and we start with x, if this is odd, then two spots down is also odd. So I go 1 two spots down, x plus two. Two more spots, one, two, I'm now at x plus four. Two more spots down, x plus six, and it goes on forever. So if the first one is even, 
x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 will all be even. If the first one is odd, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6 will be odd. So whenever you see consecutive even or consecutive odd, you're using the same idea of x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6. That can be a little hard to wrap your head around at first, but when you think about it in terms of the number line, we are always moving down two spots, it's the pieces start to come together. Now, I know what you're thinking, let's do an example. I think that's a great idea. Let's take a look at example number six. We have the sum of two consecutive even integers is 46. We want to find out what they are. Well, the let statement sets up my problem for me. They're consecutive even integers. Because it's even integers, my first one will be x, my second one will be x plus 2. The sum is 46. So the first one plus the second one equals 46. x equals 22. That means this one is 22, this one here is 24. My answer makes sense because when I add them up I get 46 and they are even and they are even integers that would be right next to each other. On number seven, we have the sum of two consecutive odd integers. And it says their sum is 28. Well, again, my let statement will set it up for me. The first one is x, the second one, x plus two. So the first plus the second equals 28, x equals 13. That means I have 13 and 15. Let's check. Does it make sense? 15 plus 13 is 28. Yep, that's good. And are they odd? Yes, they are. And are they consecutive? Yes, they are. And so my integers are 13 and 15. <clears throat> now problems like this can get much more involved, a little more challenging. Example 8 is a great problem. Example 8 is on the top half of the board here three consecutive odd integers and the sum of the first and second is 27 less than three times the third. All right, let's write our let statement. That'll set things up. We want three consecutive odd integers. So we're going to have x, x plus two, x plus four. Now, let's use what's written up here in the sentence in the problem to write out our equation. The sum of the first and the second, so x plus x plus 2, is equals 27 less than 3 times the third. So 3 times the third minus 27. Now we'll go through and solve this. We have to use the distributive property here. Um, we have 2x plus 2, 3x minus 15, we solve for x and we get x equals 17. That means our integers are 17, 19, and 21. Now let's see if it makes sense. Do they add up correctly? The sum of the first and the second, so 17 and 19, is 27 less than 3 times the third. 3 times the third, okay, minus, 20, minus 27, Yes, it did work. And so I had to do a little bit of a check there. All right, but it did make sense, and so things look good. Now, I'm going to ask you to try the last example now. The work is right here, but before you write that down, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and give that example a try. Let's see how you did. Three consecutive positive even integers. I'm not so much concerned with the word positive, as I am with the word even. <clears throat> even tells me I want to have x, x plus 2, and x plus 4. And once I have that written there, I now have quite the thing to untangle. <clears throat> 4 times the first, so 4 times x, decreased by the second, so minus x plus 2. Make sure your x plus 2 is in parentheses. You're going to have to distribute that negative is equals 12 more than twice the third. 
So there's 2 times the third plus 12. <clears throat> so once again, 4 times the first decreased by the second is 2 times the third plus 12. <clears throat> now I'll use the distributive property here to distribute the negative and over here I'll distribute the 2 that gives me 4x minus x minus 2 equals 2x plus 8 plus 12. I'll combine like terms and solve the equation. I get x equals 22. Now that gives us 22, 24, and 26. They are positive even integers. That part's good. I can check them, make sure they fit the puzzle that they gave me, and they do, and I've solved that problem. And this is how you solve consecutive integer, consecutive even integer, and consecutive odd integer word problems.